Good morning. Good morning. I thought there for a minute we were going to have to push the restart button. Um, it seemed like everything was just not quite ready to go, but I think we've settled in and we're good to go. So, uh, welcome everyone on this beautiful morning to Emmanuel. We are welcoming this morning to our pulpit, Marilyn Lewis. Um, and Marilyn was or, I, ordained back in 1977 into the Florida Conference of the United Methodist Church. She was one of the first women uh, who was actually ordained into that denomination in Florida. Since then, she has served in six different churches, three of them which is interim. <coughs> <laughs> Through the years, she has changed denominations, though, and come over to the United Church of Christ and has served, yes, 20 years as a chaplain and taught religion at St. Leo University. We are so happy to have you join us today. Uh, Marilyn uh, knows our previous pastor very well, and so she has a, a reputation for us in mind. So we need to live up to that today. So put your good spirits on and, uh, and enjoy today's service. A couple of announcements to, um, to make. Today, I understand, is Grandparents Day. Yes, what an incredible thing for those of everyone who has had the privilege of becoming a grandparent. Um, it is just the best. So happy Grandparents Day. Um, happy anniversary this week to Frank and Carol Bach. We hope that we'll be seeing them soon. And our special re uh, prayer request today is um, for Appalachia, uh, Georgia, and, and the high school and the students and the families of those students there. Um, I think that's the end of everything. So let us stand. Help. And we're going to sing our. Oh, oh yes, we forgot to give the welcome to you in Spanish. Bienvenidos a Emmanuel, donde tenemos pasión por Dios y compasión por todos. Which in English, welcome to Emmanuel, where we have yes, a passion, passion for God, God and, and compassion, compassion for all. Let's now sing our mission team songs. We are the man. Let's put our voices together.
understand all mysteries and all knowledge and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains but do not have love I am nothing if I give away all my possessions and if I hand over my body so that I may boast 
but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child, and I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now, we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide. These three, and the greatest of these is love. Here ends today's reading. Amen, amen. It's been tradition then. Here in Manuel to sing this moment and song in Spanish and English. And we're gonna sing glorify thy name because we love our God. Sing two verses in English and then we sing one verse in Spanish. And then we sing the end too. But it's easy part this one. Glorify thy name. Father, we love you.
I can't believe it took 10 plus years for me to get here. I've known Reverend George. I've had lunch with him in, in Sarasota through the years. He talked about you all the time. Yeah, good stuff. But he didn't tell me how well maintained the place is. My goodness. He didn't tell me how I would be greeted before I even got out of my car. My goodness. There are so many things that he didn't tell me, but he did tell me a lot. And he loved you, still does, ever so much. This morning I'd like to start with the gospel reading, which is a little shocker surprise. Be ready for some, maybe several shocker surprises. I don't know. Our gospel reading today comes from... George was taller than me. <laughs> comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 4, verses 14 through 22. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and report about Him spread through all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised. Oh, <laughs> and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, where he was raised, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, which was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to, good, to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed upon him. Then he began to say to them, Today, this scripture has been filled within your hearing. That's the gospel for the day from John. was the queen of bingo. <laughs> she didn't just play bingo, she lived bingo. It wasn't always that way. She worked hard all of her life and for many years. She and her husband didn't have much, but when it was time for them to retire, they wanted to enjoy themselves. Her husband bought a new recliner and watch the Phillies lose yet another game. Grandma, queen of bingo, played bingo almost every single day with her friends. But sadly, her bingo came to an end when her husband had a stroke that left him paralyzed. He could not walk, he could not speak, he could not swallow. Doctors put in a feeding tube and told Mary to find a nursing home for Lloyd, but she would have none of it. She would take him home. That's what you do, she said. And that's what she did. The recliner was replaced by a hospital bed. She had to learn a new set of skills to become a caregiver for her husband, Lloyd. He could still watch the Phillies, but he couldn't yell when they were losing. <laughs> Mary had to learn how to feed the green liquid goop through the feeding tube. They settled into their new normal. The new normal for them. I often came by, their granddaughter was in the youth group, 
And on this one particular day, I pulled the squeaky green screen door open from the front. And as I walked in, I knew that something was wrong. Finally, I could see what was wrong. Something had gone wrong in the feeding process and green goop was everywhere. Both Mary and Lloyd were frustrated, I could see that. And my first instinct was to step out of the room because I didn't think they even knew that I was there. So I put my hand on the screen door and started to go backwards and leave. As it opened, a squeak sounded and Mary was aware that I was there for the first time. And she said, don't you dare leave. <laughs> and I froze. This was about 40 years ago. She said, don't you dare leave because love sometimes looks like this. <laughs> and she was right. She was right. Sometimes love looks like that, with green goop everywhere in the room. But I, I love it when love looks lovely, don't you? When love looks lovely. I love it when a parent holds the child for the first time. I love it when the bride and groom stand before the altar on their wedding day, exchanging wedding vows. I love to see folks holding hands with their spouse. I love when love looks lovely. I love watching older folks who've tried to love for a lifetime. The love to love authentically and to love in the way of Christ. But you and I both know that love doesn't always look so lovely, does it? The newborn is now in their terrible threes and has a cold and is coughing. I know about that this week. A cold and coughing, it can't sleep. And at 3 a.m., the exhausted parent rubs the back of the child. <coughs> or that child is 17 and went out with their friends and she was supposed to be back at 10. But she wasn't. And it's midnight. And the parents are frightened and mad. Sometimes love looks like waiting, doesn't it? You get up early when you'd rather sleep because you need to fix sandwiches for the day-long beach trip. So you do. <coughs> Sometimes love looks like starting over or getting through the day or being willing to forgive yet again. <coughs> Can I have some more water, please? <coughs> Oh, I'm oh, sorry. <coughs> Sometimes love looks like a woman cleaning up green goo. that taught you what it really means to love in life. By their example, who is it that taught you real love, authentic love, what Christ-like love is like? I thank God for those people in my life who have taught me what love truly looks like. <clears throat> When love breaks our hearts, when love costs something, we need to remember what we see when we look at Jesus on the cross. If we really took Jesus and Paul, who wrote the Corinthians, as a hymn, as a song, if we took Jesus and Paul at their word, <clears throat> then it would help us to see God's grace and how to love each other with a Christ-like love. What would 
would happen if we would focus on the cross? What would happen if our love for each other would forgive all things? Hope all things. Endure all things. What would happen if parents said to their children, I will make loving you my highest priority. And I will do whatever it does, whatever it, it needs to be done to do that at whatever cost. What would happen if Christian leaders made a goal that every action might reveal Christ's love for his people and lead God's people deeper into Christ's love? Now hold on. What would happen if liberal politicians learn to love unborn children as much as they love poor children? What would happen if conservative politicians learn to love immigrant children as much as they love all other children? What would happen if nations and political groups practiced love your neighbor as yourself? What could love look like in your life what could love look like in this country? What could love look like in this world? Could it look like feeding the hungry? I have heard so much about Shepherd's Pantry through George. I am so proud of what you do in that, in that ministry. Could it look like clothing the naked or visiting the lonely? I'm also uh, aware of you Show us your socks. <laughs> Pretty awesome. And lunch boxes to feed the hungry. Wow. Visiting the lonely. Could it look like caring for the good earth that God has given us? Could it look like cleaning up green goop? In the life of Jesus, love looked like the willingness to stoop down low enough to serve and wash feet. And on the cross, love looked like the willingness to give up everything for humankind. Yes, love looks like sac sacrifice. You know that. Love looks like service. You very well know that. Sometimes love looks like us, doesn't it? Thank God. Thank God. When Christ calls us to love one another, he is calling us to a demanding vocation. God asked the prophets to love people and told them to tell the truth about that love. When Paul wrote the hymn in 1 uh, Corinthians, he knew that the greatest image of what love truly looks like is Jesus Christ on the cross where Jesus gave everything to show us how to love. Look at Christ on the cross. That's what love looks like. And when Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians that love never fails, he's not talking about our feelings, because our feelings fail very often. He's not talking about lust. Because that comes and goes. Paul was talking about the kind of love whereby you and I wake up every morning and we decide. We decide to do what's right. We decide to do what is just. We decide to love the unlovely. We decide to love the lovely. We decide to do what is generous for one another. Not because we're going to receive anything in return or get recognition, but because it is the right and Christ-like thing to do. And we do it. I see going on back there. We do it even when we don't feel like it. Paul tells us what Christian love looks like. He said love is patient, love is kind, 
Love never fails. When I read those words from Paul, I shudder because I know my love doesn't always look like that. And Paul tells me that Christian love forgives everything, endures everything, is patient to everyone. Well, my love is not quite there yet. I need to know what love looks like, and I'm thankful that Paul gives me that description. But I confess, however, that my love doesn't always look like that in day-to-day -day life. That's why we need to be focused on Jesus. In today's Gospel reading in Luke, Jesus is in Nazareth, his hometown. He grew up there. People watched him grow up there. They watched him play and scrape his knee. They watched him learn. They watched him worship. And it was there in his hometown that Jesus announces that he has come to fulfill the prophet promises that God gave to us in the Old Testament. That prophet promise of Isaiah that he has come to bring glad tidings to the poor, liberty to the captives, freedom to the oppressed. Jesus in his life and ministry was answering the age-old question, what does God's love look like? It turns out that God's love looks like compassion. God's love looks like inclusion. God's love looks like tenderness and attention to the outcast. God's love looks like forgiveness for the sinner and welcome for the stranger. That is what God's love looks like, shining through the person of Jesus, his son. But folks in Jesus' hometown was not sure they wanted God's love to look like that. Not sure they wanted God's love servant to look so much like Jesus, the boy that had grown up. This boy that looked so much like them. So many people want God's love to look like our imperfect love, which is limited in control. They want God's love to, to look like the love that we sometimes have for others. Some are in and some are out. Some are hated and some are included. So here's Jesus, both saying and showing that God's love is for all and offered to all and available to all in the ways that break down the walls that we build to divide people. Some of the people in Jesus' hometown concluded that we don't want God's love to look like that. And we don't want God's love to look like Him, Jesus. As Jesus discovers on the cross at Calvary, the world doesn't always do well with people who love authority. Jesus is rejected. He is condemned. And on the cross, he pays the price to show us what his Father's love looks like. And yes, sometimes, love looks like us. And green who? Amen. 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 Prayers for the people. Uh, I wonder if there are some uh, some folks that I need to that we need to pray for. Could you give me some of their names? We have a list. Ready to go. Boom. All right. Wow, it's quite a list. <laughs> Larry Holcomb, Dave McCarthy, Brenda Beatty, Randy O'Dell, Reverend Kipner, Todd and Randy, Elaine O'Dell, Tara.
Strauss, I might not see their names right, Ron Lucas, Ryan Griffith, Griffith Lori, Lori Greener, Blake Barrett, Avanta Gildbell, Sheila, Francis, Amy and Hanny, Kaylin Chaplin, Scott and Hudson. It's quite a list. We have a lot to do, don't we? We have a lot to pray for. Let's go to God in prayer. As we come before you, Jesus, in Jesus' name, we are the people that praise you for our innermost being. We praise your holy name. We praise you and honor you for, for all that you have done righteous within us and around us and for your compassion, holy God, slow to anger and abiding in love. But gracious, holy God, everything we need is found in you. We know that. But for those who have come here feeling broken, we pray for restoration. For those who come here feeling weak, we pray for strength. For those who come here weeping, we pray for joy. For those who come here with doubts, bring faith. For those who come here feeling shame, bring freedom. For those of us who come here feeling burdened, bring rest. For those of us who come here feeling anxious, bring peace. For those of us feeling grief, your shalom. For those of us who are sick, and hurting, depressed, and feel alone. May they feel healing. Almighty God, as the dawn breaks on this beautiful Sunday, we acknowledge your power and majesty. We acknowledge that you, through you, all things are possible. And we are grateful for endless possibilities that this new day and this new week can bring. We ask for your strength and courage as we face whatever comes our way. We're looking for an interim year and, and hard work. Lots of doubts, lots of questions. But help us to remain steadfast in our faith. Trusting that you are in control and that your plans are greater than our own. Lord, we pray for a powerful movement of your spirit in our lives and in our communities. Ignite a passion within us to seek you, to serve you, and share your love with those around us. We ask for your wisdom to discern your will and your grace to accept it, even when it may be challenging. Fill us with a sense of purpose and direction and guide our steps on the path you have laid out for us. In moments of doubt and uncertainty, remind us of your faithfulness and your promises. And help us to hold unto the truth of your word and to find peace. Shalom. In your presence. We surrender this day and all that holds to you, trusting that you will work all things together for good. And God's people said, Amen. Amen.
share with you to keep in mind this coming week. On Wednesday, the council is going to be working on next year's budget. Yeah, I heard a few. Um, it's a big job. And it's a different job this year 
because we are looking at this transition that we are in. And we are looking at paying our bills, keeping this beautiful building in these grounds, uh, looking and functioning the way they need to be so that we can worship here. But we're also looking at putting ourselves in the financial position so that on Sunday morning, our pulpit is filled. That we have someone who is here that we can count on from day to day to shepherd us along. So I'm asking you to keep us in your prayers. Now, one of the things that I am really fascinated about and interested about and curious about is we are going to have some spiritual leadership at our budget meeting on Wednesday. Reverend Amy and Reverend David Astor are coming there to help us, to guide us, and to be with us, to keep us on the right path. I've heard that there's some questioning out there, that there's some doubting, that there's some holding back, some waiting to see going on. And I understand that because it is a place that we have not been for 14 years. And so I want you, number one, to be assured that the council that you have representing you is so dedicated to not just keeping our doors open, but to make sure that the messages that we are hearing on Sunday morning, that the leadership of this congregation is such that it will take us to the next step, to the next chapter in the growth of Emmanuel. So I'm going to ask you to have faith in what we are doing, to not hold back, to trust, to ask questions if you have a question, and to reach out and to know that it isn't just our belief in doing justice, in loving, being kind, in walking humbly with the, our Lord that is driving us. And not just the financial part, we are all inclusive and we are dedicated to taking Emmanuel forward in a positive manner. And with that, I ask you to open your pockets and share with us all that you are able. With the ushers, please come forward. Let's sing out together. Count your blessing while we give the offering to the Lord. Oh, God. 
I'm going to say, go ahead and be seated. Relax, because I want you to be focused on the words we're about to say together. Because they are the ultimate of what I believe Jesus taught us to pray. And let's pray together now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please stop standing. We're going to see Joyce in the morning. There will be Joyce in the morning on that day. 